Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is the first port of call on today's uh, field trip. Um, visiting this place. Don't worry that it says private property. It means it's privately owned. You are allowed in here. There is public access. <laughs> Otherwise it wouldn't mention visiting, would it? Um, this is what it says. It's a very ancient forest and I'm hoping at some point we can find some of the ancient trees. Um, the problem is I've only ever come into this forest from the other end and didn't come in very far so I don't really know the layout that well. All I know is that I'm pretty sure this is Grand Avenue <laughs> which for a road through a forest is a bit of a grand name but um, <laughs> to have a long straight road in a forest is unusual. Um, I'm going to leave the camera running. If I get caught filming while I'm driving along I'll get shot but there's um, nobody here. And the problem I've got is that um, I don't know where you're allowed to put the car. I mean, it looks like you can just, you know, there's little bits on the side of the road where you can park. And you're not sort of in anybody's way. Um, actually, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll turn the camera off until we get somewhere because uh, that's going to jig up and down and make people seasick. That's making me seasick looking at the screen. I'll be back on again in a minute. First of the butterflies for the day. It's not actually a forest butterfly, it's more of a meadow uh, butterfly. Hence his name, Meadow Brown. But um, they're found in many habitats, so it's not that unusual. And just flown past, which may have been in shot or not, is a speckled wood, which I will watch now and see if I can see where it lands. Not going to be very clear but um, basically on the ground that's a speckled wood. A lovely dusky brown with a bronzy tinge and um, pale yellow spots. It's not going to let me get very close I doubt. They're very twitchy. fully zoomed in as well so I can't keep the camera still. That's not a bad shot. Can't normally get that close to them. So that's good. That's, I mean I've seen five or six different sorts of butterflies. It's a matter of um, whether they're going to sit still or not but the sun has just come out after a long um, shady bit so a lot of the butterflies are just sort of coming out to play again. Onwards. Well, they said, look for the monument. You'd have a job to miss it, wouldn't you? In actual fact, it took quite a bit of finding. <laughs> it's just hidden by the trees, despite being so big. And the droids I'm looking for are within the vicinity of the monument. But these are types of orchids I've never seen before. I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't know how tall. I don't know whether they're in the long grass just sticking out of the short grass. So we'll have to have a wander around and see what I can flip in fine. But I really, I've, I've got no eye for these because I've never seen them before. So uh, <laughs> we might not even find them, but we'll try. That's another one of the uh, browns. It's actually a gatekeeper. And again, they're a butterfly of the meadows really. But um, we've changed habitats now. I'll just zoom out. So we're in more sort of uh, scrubland um, and more open. This is a more open area now. But as I said, I really don't know what I'm looking for. I don't know whether I'm looking for something six inches tall or um, three feet tall in the middle of the undergrowth, out in the open, I really don't know. Um, but I suspect that we're somewhere down here. Uh, what I'm really doing is I'm scanning the horizon trying to find other people with cameras. <laughs> and I can say, seen anything good? And they'll say, well there's some down there by your feet. Well, something daft. We will carry on looking. Well, I don't know how long ago, but this has been cut. This is all too short. It's not natural. And something's been going on out there too. 
to do with animals probably because there's a water butt there but this has been cut so there's no point in looking down this end so we'll head back up there just trying to picture what the photos look like on Facebook I've got a feeling quite a few of the plants were on like bare leaf litter so they must be in under the larger trees not out in the open so we'll wander back up and perhaps look over the over the fence into the deeper woodland and see if we can find something there nothing so far uh, given up on the droids for a minute um, I found a clearing with quite a few uh, there's an awful lot of butterfly movement and quite a few uh, tall flowers and there's one butterfly I've really got my eye on but it's over the other side of here so we'll have to creep creep round and see what we can find but yeah um, as I said <laughs> not a sign of any of the orchids I want so I'll oh, blow it let's go and film some butterflies it's quite good when they land right in front of you. <laughs> uh, didn't stay though. Now I'm not kidding, I was walking backwards a minute ago and I thought it's getting a bit steep so perhaps we'll turn round and look where we're going. There's a pond, which means there's dragonflies I expect and damselflies. I can see a couple. I can't see any of the larger ones at the moment, but uh, you never know, they may zoom in. They're very um, inquisitive, the larger ones. You could say bold. They will fly right up to you, being nosy, see what you're up to. <laughs> this is a nice little clearing here. But, uh, as I say, I'd still like to get a close-up of one of these uh, peacocks. So the best thing to do, I always thought, when you find a place where they land frequently, is stay there, let them come to you, like that. You see what I mean about the uh, flicking the wings open? Uh, for predators that can be quite startling, suddenly can, being confronted with all those eyes. But, uh, but yeah, there's an awful lot here. But. Um, in amongst these from across the other side I saw something that if, if it was here would be special. One of the forest butterflies but I can't see it now I'm over here. Um, anyway I'm not in a hurry. Hang around for a bit see what comes down out the trees perhaps. Now, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to zoom in on that because I can't actually see now my screen is too bright but that's a skipper. Um, they're an unusual butterfly, because when they land, they look like a moth. But I really can't see to, to zoom in on it, because I can't actually see it in my screen at the moment. So I don't know whether I've got it in the middle of the picture or not. So I'm just trying to... Uh, if that's the bit sticking out, then in theory the butterflies was in the middle of my screen. <laughs> They're very, very fast flyers, they are. Forest butterfly. That's the one I'm after, the orange one. They don't land very often. One of our largest butterflies. Chances of getting close to that are pretty slim. It has landed. Taken off again. I'm not sure I'm going to get anywhere near that, but I'm going to keep my eye on it. And I'll keep the camera turned on while I'm doing it as well. Oh. <laughs> see, I took my eye off it to look where my feet were going and it's gone. And I didn't see which direction it went in. <sighs> well, I thought there was one around, and now I know there is. Now, sometimes it's just a matter of waiting, because they'll go up in the top of the trees for a while and sun themselves, and then they'll come floating down again. But at the moment, I've lost sight of it. No, I haven't. There it is. All right. I might break my neck falling over, but uh, it's just going to be pot luck that it decides to land somewhere near where I'm standing. Now oh, it's gone right up the other end again now. Oh well, just have to wait. It seems to come back to this area. 
that's the Red Admiral. That's just landed right in front of me. And that's a new one as well. That hasn't long been hatched. And again, these are found in the garden. Lots of people get these in their garden. But, um, oops, and he's off. Again, quick flyers. Just get my zoom out. In case anything comes in. <laughs> it's another one of those um, little skippers. whether these are in focus or not. Droids. Now that I've seen some I wonder how many others I've walked past. They are not conspicuous. Basically green in amongst green grass. Can you see them yet? These are they. Don't look anything like orchids, do they? <laughs> but they are. Or should I, I don't know whether these are, or should I say were. Have these not opened yet, or gone over? Now I shall have to look these up, but I think they are hellebarines, yes. But there's three or four different types around here. One of which, I've just seen another one out of the corner of my eye. Um, one of which is called the green flowered hellebarine, which that might be. But as I said, I don't know whether these haven't opened yet or whether they've gone. I don't think they've opened. Um, oh, let's have a look at that other one over there. Um, right, now I've got my eye in. Now I know roughly what I'm looking for. Oh. <laughs> green in a sea of green. Yeah, that's, that's easy then, isn't it? But at least they're on the side of the track. So we'll, uh, we'll see what else we can find. What I'm after is the broadleafed helleborine because they're large, and if possible, the violet helleborine. Um, we'll see what we can find. Often the case once you get your eye in. There's quite a lot around, but none of these look open. So uh, perhaps I'm a bit early. Well, we'll keep looking. I'm still after some of the larger ones. That's the forest butterfly I've been after. I'm in a totally different place. Whether I can zoom in on it, I really don't know. Let's have a walk about at the moment. Oh, it's gone out of here. Well, that's a female. It could actually be egg laying. In which case it might not... No, I was going to say, it might not take much notice of me. And then off it goes. They can fly for five or ten minutes without landing and still end up in the top of a tree. Oh well, that's the second one I've seen. <laughs> the other one had a chunk out of it, so at least that one was in good condition. Hopefully there was enough there to see. There's a little ringlet butterfly down on the brambles. If only the difference, they're really slow flyers. Well, quite honestly, I've done this area now. I'm fed up with looking for orchids in this environment when I, I just can't see anything. There's nothing here. It's not even a, a distraction type of orchid that there's, oh, well, at least there's some of these. There's just nothing. This whole area, not nothing at all. Um, so I think we'll start making my way back to the car. Mm. I shall still look on the way, but... Uh, See how we go. I've just spotted some more here that I must have walked right past on the way. Um, again, they're the same, what I think are green flowered. Um, there's a few here. These are a bit larger than the ones um, I found farther down the road. Uh, what would that be? Heading up for 18 inches tall. 
but I still don't think these are open yet. I'm sure they must open a bit more than that. You can never tell with these things. <laughs> but these are buds, they're not open yet. So there's still hope that I might find something on the way back to the car. I mean, how I walk past that, I really don't know. It's, it's not even got any grass around it. It's just getting your eye in. And once that happens, you're off. So I can see these from a distance now. Oh, is that the same sort? Or is that something different? I think it's the same sort, isn't it? Yeah. Well, at least I'm seeing them now. Another one there. <laughs> I walked past these on the way, so who knows what else I walked past. I'll just keep looking. It's about a mile to the car, I think. So Plenty of looking to do, very slowly. I don't know whether you can hear that. Well, it's either a bee's nest or a wasp's nest. It's in the fork up there. Now, obviously I'm keeping still, I don't want to make them annoyed. I suspect they can fly faster than I can run. <laughs> and I'd rather not have to. That's the first time I think I've seen they are bees. What a wild bee's nest for years. It's brilliant. I couldn't work out what the sound was for a while. I mean, they've obviously got a hole in the tree up there, and I'm plenty close enough. I'm not getting. I can zoom in, can't I? I don't know. All you're going to see is some bees flying around a hole. But, um. Yeah, I haven't seen wild bees for a long, long time. Good stuff. Oh, just recently there's been loads of noisy kids. Uh, when they're older, they'll appreciate that talking quietly in the forest is what you do so that people can't hear you two miles away echoing all around the place. Still, I was young once, I'm sure I made a racket as well. It's difficult to get the impression of scale, the height of some of these trees. They just go on and on, right up to the sky. And that's not one of the larger ones, not trunk-wise anyway. But some of these trees really are tall. I haven't found the um, large trunk ones. They do have accidents when they get too tall. <laughs> and then we end up with, uh, that was probably blocking the track at one point. It had to be cut. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, some of the, these are beech all around here. This section of the wood is nearly all beech trees. Um, but there are parts of this wood where it changes to oak um, and it has a different feel to it, the oak woods. Uh, a bit more spread out. Uh, maybe we'll get to a bit of that in a minute, but I'm, I'm getting very low on steam and I haven't even been to the other place yet. Back to the car, the um, end of the track is up there where that bollard is and um, the car's just round the corner, so it won't be long. Now this track is that wide. It's nothing. And I walked up that side of the road, probably a, about a metre away from the edge. Which means I was about here. <sighs> that is in full view. Now that's a much larger one than anything else I've seen. But how I didn't spot that on the way in. If I'd spotted this, this group on the way in, I might, have, not, might not have walked two miles. But this is a l much larger specimen. Ooh. Oh, I'm getting a bit creaky as well. Much larger. And I think this is how they are. So that may be as good as it gets. But that's certainly a much larger specimen. Oh well, at least we found some. Right, now I know the sort of uh, habitat I'm looking for. I can creep along this main track and slow right down when I get to the sort of places where what I'm looking for might be. Now, here the grass is too long and too dense, so there isn't going to be anything here, or not what I'm looking for. So, you know, I can just creep along here. Um, 
in theory, as this is the Grand Avenue, as it's called, it actually comes to a point where there's four or five roads all joined together in like a like a spider shape from above. Um, and that's all the sort of main tracks that meet up in a central point. Uh, I think I've seen it. I've seen it on a map. I've never seen it for real. So I've never been into this part of the forest or any, anywhere near it. Um, and the only thing I know is where I turned in to get into the Grand Avenue, where I started, if I'd carried on up the main road, by the time I got to the other end of the forest, I'd have probably done seven or eight miles. This is a large expanse of woodland. It really is. And although I'm still looking for um, orchids on the grass verge, I am looking where I'm going as well, sort of. <laughs> There's not exactly a lot in the way here, is there? Um, but um, I'm also looking for clearings with lots of flowers in. So I'd still like to get a, a better look at some of the forest butterflies, but um, a bit late for two, two that I really would. There's one forest butterfly I have never seen called a purple emperor. You can uh, Google it. And it's one of our largest butterflies. And to all intents and purposes, it's black. The underside is gorgeous colors, but the top side is black until it catches the light. And then it's iridescent purple. Um, and I've never seen one and they spend most of their time in the tops of the oak trees, that's why you never see them. But they do come down and ground sometimes. And the other one's a white admiral. Um, I've seen those, but uh, not for some time, because I don't go to the places where they are. Um, so, I mean, this grass verge is, is useless at the moment, you know, there's not going to be any orchids buried in there, that's for sure. It's all too dense and too overgrown. Um, as I said, now I've seen the sort of habitat they grow in, this isn't it. So, uh, okay, I should put the camera away and uh, get it out again if I see anything interesting. Just a vague memory. Somebody said something about a 15 mile an hour sign. Big droids. Let's go and have a look. Now that's the picture I had in my mind that I've been looking for. And as with many of our native orchids, they're never in bloom all the way up. Um, now this, I believe, is broad-leafed helleborine. But somebody is under the impression, one of the experts on that Facebook site, that it's actually a hybrid. And it's actually crossed with a violet helleborine which is not the colour of the blooms, it's to do with the stem and the base of the leaves, I believe. But um, it's quite a substantial plant, isn't it? Still tiny little flowers, though. But at least they look like orchids. <laughs> at least they're big enough to look like an orchid. I don't know whether that's in focus or not, but... Uh, well, those are the, the, that's the sort of thing I was looking for and expecting it to be, like that tall. And um, there's another one here with two spikes on. And of course now I'm wondering, is that one up there as well? Well, I'm going to go and have a look. But this is the image in my mind, was that sparse undergrowth and orchids sticking up that were practically a metre tall. That's what I've been looking for. Um, and I just remembered, out of the distant corner of my mind, somebody saying something about right next to the 15 mile an hour sign. Well, unfortunately, there was one coming in from the other end. And I stopped and had a good look round there and, of course, didn't see anything because it was this one. They didn't say which end. You know, there could be more 15 mile an hour signs. But that one is um, apparently a bit special because that clump, you know, there's, there's six, seven spikes on there, so that, that one's a bit special, that one. Anyway, let's have a walk up and see if that, see if that's a droid as well. It might be. I mean, it looks similar, doesn't it? And it's not too far to go. See, again, now I've got my eye in, I'm, I'm starting to see things sticking up all over the place. <laughs> but are there more? Yeah, see, that's another one. I drove right past that. Didn't even give it the time of day right past it. That looks different again. 
Let's make sure I film the leaves. Now, given that one of these is called a broad-leafed helleborine, this is probably it. But then, there's supposed to be violet helleborines as well, which is to do with the colour of the stem. So that may be what that is. Anyway, I've got my feet sticking out in the road and there's a car coming. See what I mean about getting your eye in? I can see these sticking up all over the place now. Loads of them. They're everywhere. Ow! <laughs> it's knelt on a bramble. Oh, cheers, mate. Now, this may well be the violet helleborine. I'm going to end up kneeling on brambles. I can see it coming. But these look like some good sized blooms. It's a wasp. <laughs> Strangely enough, wasps are the pollinators. And like I said, once you get your eye in, you start looking round. There's another one there. Right, well this was not the bit I was expecting to find anything. I was expecting to find it up the other end, not this end. Oh! So it's these running brambles, actually. They're death traps. <laughs> Because if you do go over in undergrowth like this, you will put your hands down and you will get them ripped to shreds. <laughs> yeah, it's all bad enough putting your knee down. Oh, I'm so pleased I found these. I'd have been disappointed to have gone home without seeing them. Right, I think I can put down three species today. Those first ones were the green flowered. They're all hellebarines. Um, I do believe there was a period of time where they weren't classed as orchids and then they got pretty... and somebody had a proper look at them and thought, oh yeah, actually they are. Um, but um, yeah, we've seen the green flowered and I'm pretty sure now we've seen broadleafed and violet and possibly a hybrid between the two. Um, but I suspect if I wandered around here I could find an awful lot more. <laughs> That's more like it. These are the droids we're looking for. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I mean, you know, we're not a tropical country. You know, at the end of the day we have pretty harsh winters at times. Um, and we don't get the large bloomed orchids. Um, I think our bee orchid is probably the largest one. Um, which I've yet to see. Who knows? Maybe at the next place. But it's a bit, it's actually it's too late in the year, they'll have gone over by now. But this is a nice looking one. It's got nice colours. A ladybird on there as well. I'm pleased. Oh! I'm pleased that I can get down there and still get up again. But I must admit my back is hurting. It's walking slowly. If I walk briskly, I'm normally okay. Right, well, panoramic view. And anything sticking up now really catches my eye. And I just I've just driven past these. I mean, I'm stopped there, look. Because of the 15 mile an hour sign and that huge clump. <laughs> but drove right past these and I was looking. You've just got to see it. And then that image, that sort of image now is implanted. So wherever I am now, looking out to the side of the road, I'll see that. I won't drive past them again. I might do those tiny little <laughs> green ones that we looked at earlier. Oh, I'm pleased I found them anyway. And now that I've found them, there's a lot. That's good. Very good. Right, back to the car.